Building a home lab dashboard went from something that I wanted to do to something that I needed to do. And as time goes on, the same will most likely be true for you. The problem is there are a lot of options out there. They all offer features or functionality that is slightly different than the alternatives, and there isn't necessarily a best option. But what I can tell you from personal experience is that the dashboard that's the most easily customized is the dashboard that will actually stay up to date as time goes on. In order to understand that point, we have to take a step back. A few years ago, I created a home lab dashboard using a tool called Homer. At the time, Homer was everything that I wanted in a dashboard tool. It was minimal, looked good, and had a bunch of customization options, some which I took advantage of and others that I didn't. There was a slight learning curve because everything was customized through a YAML configuration file. But as soon as you understood how it worked, it was easy enough to add new items or change existing items. But that configuration file was what I didn't know at the time would lead to being its biggest downfall. It's an amazing tool, but editing a configuration file every time a service changes becomes a chore. So on my quest to find the best dashboard tool with a GUI editor that runs in Docker, is minimal and customizable, I came across Homar, not to be mistaken with Homer. Homar is a tool that just about anyone can pick up and start to use immediately. You can add tiles to it that point to local or external services with a customizable app icon, determine right away if the service is or isn't up by enabling a status check. And while there are customizations that can be made, they're generally web-based in the tool itself rather than updating configuration files. This was extremely important to me because if you compare my old dashboard to my new dashboard, you can see how many services were missing. And yes, it was from laziness, but my goal was to limit the barrier and make it easier to manage. It also had the benefit of having connections to specific applications in the form of widgets. While I don't use the majority of them, I did connect it to my Proxmox server and my Docker server using a tool called Dash so that I can get a quick glance of what's going on. And yes, my Proxmox server is way over allocated right now, but that's due to a hardware issue on my second node that will get fixed one of these days or more likely from me buying a new server, so be on the lookout for a video for that. Homar even gives you the ability to manage all of your Docker containers directly from the dashboard. So yes, there's a lot that can be done from this one dashboard. Adding Homar to your environment is extremely easy if you have a server that's currently running Docker. First, create folders for where you want the volumes to point to, update their paths in the Docker compose file that I left in the description, and create the container. When Homar is deployed for the first time, you'll have to set up a username and password, and after you do, you'll get brought to your dashboard. Everything on the dashboard can be customized, but we'll break this down into a few different steps to show you how you can customize your dashboard. First, you can edit your dashboard by selecting the edit button in the top right. Any changes you make will not be saved until you hit the edit button again, which will exit and save your changes. If you refresh the page before saving, you'll have to redo all of the changes, so make sure you do that. To add a tile, select the Add Tile button in the top right. A tile can be an application or a widget, but we'll start off with an application. For a basic setup, you'll add the application name and web address to access the service, as well as an icon in the Appearance section. If the icon you're looking for doesn't exist, you can add it to the images path that's linked as a volume on your Docker server. As soon as the file is added there, you'll have to restart the container to see the changes. If you don't have an easy way to add or remove data from your Docker server, I highly recommend the File Browser Docker container. It will let you navigate the entire file system through a web browser and easily add, remove, change, or delete files. In the written instructions, I'll add a Docker Compose file for it. Next, you can modify the status checker, which will determine if the services show online or offline based on an HTTP status code. You can disable this, but if it's enabled, it'll display red or green depending on if the service is reachable or not. The integration tab is a huge part of Homar that is what ultimately allows widgets to work properly. Depending on the service you're adding, it might be available in the integration section. If it is, the service can be linked to a widget and display information related to the service. On my dashboard, I have two Proxmox widgets displaying information about my cluster and the virtual machines currently running. But if you're using Pi-hole, you can display ad blocking info. With Plex or Jellyfin, you can show media that's currently being streamed and a bunch more. 
The goal of this is to have a quick glance of exactly what is happening on that specific service. Each service is configured differently, but on the HOMAR documentation, they have detailed steps on exactly what has to be done on the specific service in order to get it to display information in the widget. After the integration is configured, it's as simple as selecting the widget for the specific integration, which speaking honestly, could be integrated better so you're aware which widget works with which service. But as soon as the widget is added and the integration is created, the dashboard will display information from that service. In the Docker menu, this is an easy way for you to add all of your Docker containers currently running on the same server as Homar directly to your dashboard. This is all done from a volume mount that we pass to the container in our Docker Compose file, but all of the containers that currently exist on the same Docker instance will show here and can easily be added. And believe it or not, Homar even gives you a way to manage your Docker containers. So if you'd like to start, stop, or restart any individual containers, you can do it directly from your dashboard. Heading over to the settings, this is where you can customize Homar even further, and this is where a bunch of options for the actual look of the dashboard are made. The settings are rather self-explanatory, but you can ultimately change how the dashboard looks on small, medium, and large devices, and then customize the look of the dashboard by adding a bar that holds icons or widgets to the left, right, or both sides of the dashboard by default. This is where you can also disable the status of services and turn off the green or red icon next to each service displaying if it's online or offline. The next thing most people wanna do is customize the background. If you follow the Docker Compose file that I created, you'll have a volume called IMGS, short for images, and all of your background images should go inside of there. Once the image is there, you can edit the dashboard and add the exact path to the image, starting with forward slash IMGS. As soon as you add the image, you must restart the Homar Docker container. If you don't, the image won't work. This is the exact same process for icons. So if you have any applications where you're missing the icon, download it, add it to the folder, reference it in the appearance section, and once you restart the container, it will work. Finally, in the user settings section, this is where you can modify the default board as well as any search settings. Keep in mind that if you allowed anonymous access earlier, these user settings won't be customizable for those users. The last thing that I wanna bring up is an area for improvement. First, for me, this is an absolutely awesome dashboard and one that works for my individual requirements and is extremely customizable. However, compared to my old Homer dashboard, the performance is a little worse. I'm noticing that it takes about an extra second or so to load, which might not seem like a lot, but when you're constantly opening new tabs in your web browser, it becomes more noticeable. At the same time, to be fair, there's a lot on my dashboard that's dynamic, meaning the status of the services and the Proxmox and Docker widgets, and overall, it makes sense that it would take longer to load when it's pulling up dynamic information. It's just something that I've noticed and I'm hoping will be improved in the future. That said, the performance isn't bad by any means, so I'm just pointing it out. Other than that, go ahead and customize it and you'll see for yourself how easy it is to use. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.